Uh, okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 26th uh, Northampton Planning Board. Um, tonight, before we get started, we've got a couple uh, hearings, but before we get started, it's the public comment portion of the evening. So if there's anybody in the audience who has any comments to share that don't relate to the hearings we're about to be uh, presented upon, just raise your hand, come on up to, to the podium. And if not, we can jump right into the first hearing which is an amendment to zoning uh, ordinance uh, create a, def a definition for small cell uh, no, sorry, telecommunication antennas and modify and add to section 350-10.9 specifying permit approval criteria for small cell telecommunication antennas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, no we like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so do we have a review? I... Um, sure. If we need to, I can put it up on the screen, but I think you guys got it. Um, so basically this is an or this is a series of ordinances. One is in zoning and one is outside of zoning. So technically the planning board is only charged with holding a public hearing for zoning amendments. Um, but the this is um, you can also make a recommendation to city council about the other piece as well. Um, but the public hearing um, um, is required for the zoning ordinance piece, and then it'll go to legislative matters, which is the subcommittee city council, before it goes to the council floor for a vote. So this is the, the first stop. Um, and the idea behind this ordinance is um, that as the telecommunications technology changes there um, and moving towards this 5G, but also just um, trying to fill in all the gaps with smaller units closer together to address, as you've heard from applicants that have come before you to be mounted on telephone poles, to address the ever increasing demand that's created by these companies <laughs> for more bandwidth. Um, so the purpose of this is, so we've, for many years, the zoning ordinance addressed uh, special permit and site plan criteria for the um, installation of a new monopole is what they called them originally you know tall 190 to 300 foot tall pow uh, towers with um, cell communication antennas on top of those and many times and there, were, there are all sorts of regulations about co-location and making sure that we're not planting these huge towers with just one um, company um, on them, but making sure there's room for all the different providers that are out there. Um, so any, right now, there's, there's a special permit criteria for any, the installation of any new tower. It's site plan approval if there's a location on an existing building tower or other facility so that the telecommunications provider doesn't have to install a new structure, a physical structure in the ground. So that's a a lower threshold because they come through site plan. With the changing technologies, now these providers want to go, as I said, in the street right of way, smaller antennas, and on uh, many times on existing um, electric utility poles. So we've had it, the planning board has seen a few of those come into site plan because they weren't new poles technically because they were on an existing electric utility pole. Um, but um, there's been um, advice and understanding, at least from our, the city's perspective, that this starts weighing down essentially the right of way. More and more things are vying for the limited space and the right of way. So the purpose of this ordinance is to define these new technologies because we don't have anything that's specific in the ordinance. It really talks about the idea of when you're building on private property, you're putting these new facilities in place as opposed to the public right of way. So the um, ordinance, um, um, these two ordinances as a package define what a small cell um, communication system is. And, and in fact, I've heard the, I think at one of our last hearings, the providers were saying, we don't call them that, they're called something else. But, Right now, this is our placeholder name for the thing that goes in the right of way. Um, so um, this would um, create that definition um, and um, 
inside of zoning, so in the definition section, and I'm, I know I'm jumping to the second part of this ordinance is in front of you, but it would add within our, um, the definition section of zoning a new definition called small cell tel telecommunications or small cells, which are wireless telecommunication antennas and, a, and equipment that are mounted on structures less than 50 feet tall um, and less than three feet um, three cubic feet in volume and um, are not more than 10% taller than adjacent structures. So it's really defining it by size um, and location. Um, and, and, and to say, you know, the purpose is to address 5G te uh, telecommunications consistent, consistent with the Federal Communications Commission regulations, <coughs> standards and orders for small cell, including RF frequencies in excess of the FCC rules. Small cells are distinct from satellite antennas, elsewhere defined in this section. Um, and then it goes on. Um, um, and so that's the definition piece. Then the second part of that is then providing the planning board with this framework um, for um, um, special permit and site plan review criteria of these facilities. So um, an application for, and this would be in section 10.9, application for approval of a wireless small cell telecommunication shall be granted if it meets the requirements set forth in the definitions and the following design standards. All equipment other than antennas, wires to the antennas and emergency shutoff shall be placed in an underground vault Antennas shall be located at least seven feet high on the pole. Only the emergency shutoff shall be placed at ground level. Wireless small cell telecommunications applications must include radio frequency analysis to demonstrate the proposed equipment will have the smallest number of pole attachments necessary to serve the city and that rooftop and tower, which is the city's preferred locations, are not feasible and that equipment is located on arterial or collector street locations over residential neighborhoods. Um, um, the Director of Planning and Sustainability shall be the approval for authority for small cell applications which shall approve any application that meets the requirements set forth herein. So, what this does is it sets up actually an administrative review for these and then if if they don't want to meet this so particularly the underground vaulting of these of this equipment um may be of concern to some of these providers because it definitely adds you know to the experience. Um, uh, and and then there would be um an appeal procedure probably to the zoning board because it would be considered administrative review um, for this. So that's the piece about the zoning and then the whole other piece, would you have questions about that? I was going to ask, so, so a few months ago we had like a booster antenna right. come in front of us for, um, it was by the Ottoman in the right of way. Right. Um, so would that, in that example, if uh, piece of equipment that was mounted included the antenna. I don't know if it was only the antenna. Yeah. Would that have, in this case, not if this goes through, we wouldn't have seen that. It would have just right. been an administrative review. Right. So even though it was enough for and a butter to come out to, they had concerns about the size of the antenna and where it was going to go mm -hmm. and what it was going to mean to them. Would a butters have that opportunity to voice an opinion, or just be by right, and it would be an administrative review and approval? It would be by right and an administrative review and approval if these standards were being met. And just sort of to speak to that, at the same time that we notify butters, the planning board can't say no to a project if it doesn't meet the standards because right. of the FCC rulings about you know that we have to allow this this kind of um, technology. So, in some sense, it sets up a, a false sense of ability to weigh in on a project from the hat of fur butters, um, because the board, the city, really has to approve these if they meet our, you know, standards that aren't, unless they're determined to be otherwise unreasonable, and then you know, they could potentially fight that through. So again, just for just for context, that 
one at autumn end, the mm -hmm. size of it, which it wasn't big, but it wasn't, you know, it was big enough. Yeah. But if, if one was needed for 5G uh, coverage on every, you know, existing utility pole up and down Elm Street within the right of way, mm -hmm. um, it would, that would just be an administrative approval. So just right. the visual impact of that would be one of these things that, you know, it's maybe three feet tall, four, three and a half, four feet tall. Um, and they're just not the most attractive things. Versus when they're on a building, we try to hide them or make sure they're not visible. If they're, on, if they're downtown, we go and see them from Main Street and so forth. Right. But here, there would be no aesthetic parameter. So I think the way that you would get it, no, that, that's true. The other issue is they're most likely going to be, at, be attached to existing utility poles, right. which aren't the most aesthetically pleasing to begin with. But the whole reason for this um, radio frequency analysis is to say you have to prove that you're not just doing them on every single pole, that there is a demand, there's a gap in your service, which is why you're putting it on this pole. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine that they'd be, I think it would be hard to show that you need them on every single yeah, pole. Just... Um, <coughs> and I, my guess is they wouldn't want to, I mean, that's more expense for them too. Um, but anyway, I, I, yes, you're right in that you wouldn't be able to create any kind of mask or you know other kind of evaluation to um, an applicant. And, and, not that I'm hung up on that, but just visually in context, I think it's a good example. One of the, one of the reasons that particular unit jumps out at you visually is that it's only eight feet up the pole or 10 feet up the pole. Uh -huh. You know, it's not at the top. It was at the top with the other equipment. You probably wouldn't notice it. You just drive by. And yeah. But the fact that it's, you've got the equipment up top and then there's a gap and then there's this thing, you know, attached to the pole. Yeah. And so I don't know, I, I don't know from a coverage standpoint if it matters, if it's 10 feet up or 15 feet up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's an issue. Well, why would they choose to put it so low? Yeah. Well. I don't know if it's for access. Um, it's easier to yeah, that. But that's not, that might be, I mean, I wonder if that's that's not the antenna, probably per se. It might be an emergency shutoff. But if but the the other piece of this is says all other equipment except for the wires to the antennas and an emergency shutoff um, has to be underground. So you might not even see that stuff if it's not an emergency shutoff, because I would imagine an emergency shutoff is just a handle um, and not a big box. So in this scenario. My guess is that stuff you wouldn't even see because the antenna. Yeah, since I got whatever's there the was a one-piece unit that included the shutoff, included the antenna, included whatever else is in there. Well, the the I, if I recall correctly, the there were three that came in sort of together. There was that one, one down by the high school, yep. and then over by JFK. I think they came in together, but they. Um, the, all the antennas were at the top of the pole. The antenna itself. Mm -hmm. And then they had other stuff marching up the pole. Okay. Um, so in, um, I'd have to go back and look at those plans to see what was attached to the pole at that elevation. My guess is that's the stuff that would have to be underground. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Talk more about providers. Is it just Verizon? <coughs> is there no, a I mean all of them. Well, <coughs> well Verizon, Sprint. Um, T-Mobile, unless they merge, yeah, AT&T. And they can't, they're all going to have their own specific equipment. Mm -hmm. And so they'll they, they want to co-locate, they won't really be able to co-locate on the same pole, they'll be on the pole next to it. Right. Um, and I, I hear the part about the FCC, and they've kind of got all the cities and towns over a barrel, because there's, there's been quite a bit of controversy about the widespread bandwidth of the, yeah. the the 5G network, yeah. you know, in terms of adverse impacts mm -hmm. on people's health. Um, so I guess I, I feel a little funny about likening the city with it, though I know our culture just demands more and more bandwidth all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm a little nervous too about this analysis, the radio frequency analysis, because we have experts at the DPW who look at stormwater plans, mm -hmm. and they can understand that. Do we have somebody? 
some kind of a, a, a electrical engineer who's going to look at these telecommunication plans and, and make sure that we're not being bluffed into more and more coverage. That, uh, when they say they they have to prove that they need that, who well, do we have to you, go to, to? How do we vet that? Yeah. I mean, they are required to do that now with cell tower with what we used to have <laughs> our cell towers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we would internally review it and see what they're, I mean, yes, we're relying on their engineers to give us that information, but, um, you know, we can, we poke holes and try to ask them questions about that and then, but I don't, I cannot recall a time on any other permit um, application that came before the planning board where they did not explain their gaps in a way that made sense and was shown on the on the maps that they um, distributed, showing their analysis of where their gaps were. Um, and you know, I, I do remember uh, there being a little bit of overlap between two towers, but it really sort of filled in a bigger gap between another, for example. Um, so. Uh, you know, there's no, no, we don't have yeah. an electrical engineer that would just come in and review an RF. I mean, we could, we always have the option of having them pay for an outside expert to re review on behalf of us, but we also have enough engineers that can probably interpret what's being um, shown. I, I guess in the past, they, they've shown us like these booster antennas, they've shown the gap and why they need it, and they've shown the before and the after. Yeah. And it wouldn't be to their benefit to provide any more. You know, they want they want coverage throughout, not excess coverage throughout. You know what I mean? So they wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't imagine they're gonna they're gonna pay to have more than they need. Uh, for my question is that can you determine uh, the number of uh, the distance between poles or? Uh, because if all these companies can, if they decide, well, oh, that, that spot in that area, they start to overpopulate that whole thing. Couldn't you stipulate, like, well, each, I don't know, the decent between poles? Well, the problem with that is then it goes back to, I mean, it really has to be done based on their analysis of coverage and need or gaps and their need. So even if we say, you know, the poles have to be at least, you can't put, you know, yeah, two within 100 right? feet. Yeah. They're going to come back and say, but my gap is right there. I need to have it at this pole. Too bad. No. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, well, what, that, uh, what could happen is if, if Sprint is using this pole yeah. and to Georgia, so at and is going to go to the pole next to them. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Right, yeah. someone's going to go to the next. So you could end up with every pole, yeah. not by the same manufacturer, but everybody trying to get coverage in the same area. That's right. I'm concerned, too, because all of a sudden you have the area overpopulated. I don't, and I don't know enough if they, if, you know, if like, I don't know how the 5G works, or like, right. I mean, you know, you have a different provider than I have, but I can use the same frequency, mm -hmm. right? No, some, not all the time. Like, for example, like, well, AT&T and Verizon. Right, but there are blocks that use one yeah. band, and then there's another block. But they're not all, I mean, so if there are 10 companies and five use one type and the other five use the other, that doesn't mean they're 10 different, you have to have 10 different poles to address them that can be shared between those two different um, technologies, right? So you're saying Verizon may put the pole up, but it may, if you're an AT&T person, you may be able to benefit off this new pole that Verizon put up? That's what I don't know. Oh. Well, I think that some, like, so for example, you can go, just a little bit, I know of this, uh, is that you can go from like T-Mobile to Verizon because they use the same technology. Right. Yeah, I don't know what AT&T, if they share with right. I'm assuming AT&T shares something with Sprint because they sell they sell businesses like in some of the same places. But I right, and so it's like whenever you you know you might be and the technology has changed so much since they first came out, right? So before you couldn't use that their someone else's bandwidth, but now it's 
you know, you go to another state that where Verizon or I don't know, whatever, another company has, has owns the coverage. Yeah, coverage. You can still use that coverage even though that's not your company. I mean, I like to believe it's nice to have a city that's. I mean, so what gives me a little thing? Yeah, this is 5G. By 10G, everyone's going to have an yeah. antenna yeah, be planted smart. in their heads. Come on. Come on. Um, hmm. Yep. So one of our concerns is that uh, it, their aesthetic look at this in the next five years. When, uh, for instance, there's a huge monopole um, down on King Street behind the uh, Bay State Health Building. Yeah. Um, and it appears that someday that may be obsolete, if what I'm hearing is correct. So, and I don't know back then when we approved that, if we had them put in a some kind of clause that they would be responsible for taking down that equipment. Yeah. All of them have all, that. All of them. Does, do these have that kind of cause too? Because eventually all this equipment is going to become obsolete. We yeah. might want to. So let's go to the other piece of the ordinance, which is not zoning, but it's in um, section 285, which is in the general code for the city. The proposed language is um, to allow a section that's just focused on small cell um, antennas and street on street poles that, um, that it, there are four clauses, basically the city saying we want to encourage this, um, but minimize adverse impacts um, and um, covering administrative costs to the city. Uh, wireless and other telecommunication an antennas are to be regulated under zoning. Um, and each small cell te telecommunication antennas on public ways or public land shall pay an annual $400 for right-of-way access and inspections. Um, although fees can be waived if the wireless communications provider provides free community or city Wi-Fi services in accordance with the service agreement signed by the mayor. Tele telecommunications provider shall be solely responsible for equipment and safety for moving equipment at no cost to the city when required for any city construction project and for ensuring there's no impediment to pedestrian or traffic flow. Um, so, um, this doesn't say set up bonds, but so there, the other piece of this is that they're when they're locating on utility poles, they're actually also leasing from National Grid. Right. So there's an agreement. I, I'm almost certain there's an agreement about how that works. You put the equipment on, you're responsible for taking it off. Um, but then, and then the city can also require them to take it down if we need to. You know, do work in the area. But would that say in that case would National Grid be monitoring if it's 5G now in three years, you know, we're up to 6G or whatever, and so this equipment is obsolete, would National Grid be keeping track of, okay, it's time for your this piece of equipment to be removed? Yeah. Well, I think the telecommunication providers would want to upgrade their system. I mean, just like they do now, they've been constantly upgrading on every pole. Uh -huh. So every two years, uh -huh. Verizon place, comes in yeah. and says, oh, we're taking these panels down off of King Street and putting these other ones up. So it's they're, they're, they would be driving that yeah. anyway. It's interesting. I think that the, what we call telephone poles are actually owned by the telephone company. And I think National Grid rents from them and sort of all the cell phone power. So it's funny, not a whole lot of telephone hard lines are carried by the telephone right, poles right, anymore. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're the ones who originally had uh, yeah. kind of um, conveyed for. Hmm. Okay, so what do you need from us? So, um, take public comment, as good as any, mm -hmm. and then um, determine whether or not, so ultimately you would vote to uh, recommend these changes to city council. So I have yep. one question: the emergency shutoff. I, I imagine if some it's kind of secured in some way, but seven feet isn't that tall. I reach up eight feet. I wonder why we pick seven feet. Um, it would seem like out of a safety thing, you wouldn't want people to be able to test. Yeah, they trust all about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if they. If, they, um, if it's for them, so they can reach it with a six-foot step ladder or something like that. But it's it's got to be locked off, so yeah. that you just anybody can't go and jump and pull it down. 
you would, you would hope so. Yeah, we, we haven't seen that. From a liability it's standpoint, it's, it's got to be that way. I mean, it says at least seven feet, so uh -huh. I think that's the minimum. Okay. So, okay. yeah. I, I imagine they should put some thought into it, but it seems to me that that's just kind of low for kind of vandalism and whatnot. And six. That's what I was saying, the one, the, the booster cells that we, or antennas that we looked at, the only reason it stands out at all is because it's so low. Yeah. yeah it was right. a high, when you wouldn't even. Put it. Why don't they? Yeah. You know, they don't want to get a six foot ladder out there. So yeah, right. they're an extensive ladder. Um, the power company is set off on poles by the two performers, but they're way up at the yeah. top. Um, so I imagine, Carol, that they put a lot of thought into that, but I. I would well, I would just want to check that seven foot minimum okay. and perhaps have it more like ten feet. Has, has this been shared at all with any of the providers? Um, yes, it, it, we sent it to Verizon because they were asked because they were in the process of getting their permits for the other ones. Mm -hmm. They asked about it. Um, the thing they don't like about it is the four hundred dollar fee. <laughs> 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 I don't like my bill every month. Right, right. <laughs> so, so they came up with the seven feet. I don't know. I didn't. I did not draft this language. Oh. But you know, you could make a recommendation that you're, you know, that you think this is a good ordinance, but you you have a question about the height and um, would like the city council to um, look at whether or not, yeah. So we can move it through this stage of the yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean you can say to them they don't have to pay the four hundred dollars, they can just provide Wi Fi. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh any qu other questions from the board before we open up the public? Uh so I'll open uh public comment right now. Is anybody here uh, that would like to comment on this issue? So I'll raise your hand. Okay. We'll keep public comment open a little bit while we talk. Anything else? So I'd be prepared to make a motion, I guess. All right, so I want to move to close public comment. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Okay. So I would move to approve the amendment to the zoning ordinance, um, which creates a definition for small cell telecommunication antennas and which modifies and adds to section 350-10.9 specifying permit approval criteria for small cell um, with the caveat with the uh, recommendation to the city council that they research more the the height of the antennas and the uh, cutoff switch on the poles height of antenna and cutoff yeah because if i read this correctly the antennas can be at seven feet only the emergency shutoffs will be placed at ground level so if that's in one on the back side. Yeah, the town should be located at least seven feet, which implies yeah. it could be so. And then the shutoff could be right at my belt. So you'll get some of these Luddites who don't like the rough <laughs> moving of technology <laughs> smash and right. left and right. That's right. Uh, so we have a motion. Any second? Second, Yuri. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. Next up, uh, we have a hearing set for 715. For, it's a continuation from September 12th, uh, 2019, on a site plan amendment for 1924 LLC, former Clark School, to remove steps at Accessory Athletic Court 40 54 Round Hill Road, Northampton Map ID 31B 4. So, just to give you an update, you guys had basically heard everything and addressed everything at the last meeting um, except for stormwater because the stormwater permit had not been amended um, this morning um, DPW sent over the um, approved amended stormwater permit so um, from the city standpoint the stormwater issues have been addressed Super. So my name is Chris Carney. I'm a land surveyor and civil engineer at our Lebec Association. I'm here on behalf of Jim Hebert of 1924 LLC to discuss uh, stormwater permit amendment for proposed pickleball court at uh, Mount Hill Road.
So I think you're all pretty familiar with the project at this point. Uh, so I'm going to try to focus on stormwater only. Uh, currently, stormwater, uh, we built another subcatchment and incorporated it into our stormwater model for the whole site. Uh, this subcatchment is this general area and topography slopes from the building down towards in a butter on the southern side of the property. Uh, currently, there's a or, uh, currently the site is under construction. A few years ago, there was a half court basketball court in this area, so this was all impervious area, as well as a playground area with gravel over in this area. Uh, the applicant proposing to replace uh, that impervious area, eliminate some impervious area, and then add a pickleball court, which would all be impervious <coughs> area, uh, in order to. Uh, satisfy stormwater requirements. We uh, designed a bioretention area here, which will catch water as it sheet flows across the pickleball court. It will catch this in a low depression here. The depression's less than a foot deep, so pretty shallow with very uh, gentle uh, side slopes to it. So it won't present a safety concern. Uh, additionally, there was a, a, a dry well uh, here, which took roof runoff and infiltrated it into the ground. We're proposing to relocate that dry well off the pickleball court into a grass area. Uh, the design approach we took was very conservative. I know there's concerns about uh, stormwater runoff to the abutting property, so uh, we dug some test pits out there to confirm soil conditions. USGS hydrologic models show it as a C soil. Uh, our test pits showed more of an A soil, which is, uh, shows a much greater infiltration rate than uh, a sea soil would, but we still model the soils as a sea soil, so it, it will infiltrate more water than what our models predict. Also, we make sure to follow all the mass EP and Northampton regulations to make sure post development flows are less than pre development flows. Uh, and additionally, this uh, dry well right here, uh, it's, it's really could be described as a sunken rain barrel that at one point accepted stormwater runoff. Maintenance crews say it doesn't overflow generally. If it did overflow, it would sheet flow across uh, what was the basketball court and now is the pickleball court. So we're proposing to uh, remove that and replace it with a new dry well. And uh, that will provide increased infiltration in the area. That's not even modeled in our stormwater report. So I guess uh, what I'm trying to get to is just some very conservative design we've come up with and it's been conditionally approved by uh, Northampton DPW. Questions from the board. The last time uh, the presentation, um, two issues were discussed. One was the stormwater. Uh, no permanent lighting was also discussed. Um, and we talked a little bit, but didn't really finalize anything about potentially additional plantings along the fence just for the sake of the abutters. Just the visual impact of the courts or, or potentially of additional. The plantings would offer additional noise barriers. Um, I don't think any permanent lighting was, was shown, but that was a question that was raised before, and we might want to make that a condition. But it wasn't a, the applicant wasn't um, objecting to that. So there's no nighttime lights on the courts? Yeah, there were before. We raised it, and they said they had no plan to do to introduce them, but we might want to make that a condition. They're going to not add it. So that's so just on the stormwater, I'm just all those downspouts from the roof that go into the dry well, yep. they're not in your calculations? Uh, so, uh, no, we, we're we going to replace the, uh, I'd say, poorly functioning dry well, existing with a, with a new dry well. And those weren't incorporated into stormwater models that we generated. So ultimately, there'll be less runoff from installing a new dry well. And, and in your experience, in a year or so, how does the maintenance of that, what we call fondly a rain garden or a bioretention basin, how does that happen or how do we? So uh, as part of the conditional approval, we're, uh, the applicants required to generate annual reports uh, regarding the maintenance of all the stormwater BMPs on site. So part of the conditional approval is to update that storm uh, stormwater management plan to add these new, these two new BMPs, the rain garden and the infiltration basin. Uh, maintenance is, is always a concern, so we write in a, a uh, maintenance plan for all of these and inspection schedules, and then what you're looking for when you're inspecting, and then how to remediate any anticipated problems. So uh, and then they're signed off by a... Yeah, that's, I think that's a 
districts. Great. It's a requirement from the so the stormwater per, so there was a stormwater permit issued for the entire redevelopment of the site. This is just an amendment of that, but that original stormwater permit had um, annual inspection requirements and reporting. Um, so this just gets wrapped into that overall stormwater. So it's not going to be just inspecting the bioretention area. Um, the city has a stormwater fee for every property owner. You, if you're managing your, if there's certain um, ways that a property owners can get their fees reduced if they're showing their, um, they have on site retention or infiltration, but they can only get that reduction and it's looked at every year if they're under stormwater permit and they're doing regular maintenance. So there's also, there's almost a built in incentive for um, property owners that have these big systems. To, to do maintenance, annual maintenance. Out of your curiosity, what are the types of uh, fees associated with that? Don't know. <laughs> Not my department. <laughs> <laughs> we, we really appreciate the maintenance and what the city does to encourage maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of cities are not maintaining it. Because yeah. we don't have a, a, an approach person who looks at all of those reports. Well, we do have a store. Field. Yeah. Well, now our, the stormwater section of the DPW has been expanded, so now it's not just one person, there are at least two people there. And the, I think the point of that was, one, to sort of get on top of the billing and and, right. and understanding all these um, requests for um, reductions based on systems. So that is giving a little bit more ability to follow up on the required maintenance. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily that we're, you know no. it can be done for every single system in the city, but um, there's a little bit more support. Yeah. I'm no expert, but it just seems there's more and more heat flow in our community <laughs> as time goes on. You know, yeah. as there's more rain. Yes. <laughs> uh, any other comments from the board before we open to public? No. Anybody here from the public who wishes to comment on this? But if you're not from UMass, who wishes to come? Okay, we'll keep it open while we discuss uh, a little further. If there's anything. So, we talked about, like, say, last time, I don't know if it's an issue with anyone. Uh, I think the requirement or a condition with no permanent lighting, they, they were receptive to it before and they don't plan on doing it, so I don't see any harm there. And we, we talked tangentially about plantings. And I don't know. I thought I remembered that uh, owner who was here then was going to come back for an administrative review of an updated planting plan. Well, or? I think there was a discussion about whether any of that could fit in given the other the stormwater system uh -huh. and the building. So I don't know. Um, I don't think that was resolved. I was just looking at the minutes, which I didn't get a chance to send out to you. Um, that there was. Um, you know, there's a discussion about possibility of adding plantings, but at the same time, um, I think there was a concern about um, whether or not that would that would fit within the context of what's already there, and also, you know, as these grow over time, um, they'll fill out, fill in. Do you know, Chris, um, if any additional plantings? So we're, we're proposing some bushes along the exterior of the court. As, long as, uh, as well as some larger deciduous trees here, and then the bioretention would have some lower plantings. But do you know, if, so we saw this plan last time or something uh, similar to it, do you know if any additional plantings? No additional plantings have been added, same plantings as before. I think it's a valid concern that an arbor bitey row or something along the fence would grow large enough to go into the fence and then root impact into the bioretention area, uh, as well as as the water flows across the arbor bitey, it can create ponding and back up what's supposed to be stormwater flowing into the bioretention area and cause a damage impact which then could divert stormwater around the basin, which is what we don't want. So, so are these are provided or no? I, I think they're in incubators, I believe. So. Yeah, I think the in fact the historical commission made a note that they didn't want to see our variety there, so I don't think that's um, going to be okay. I mean I think that they did oh I'm sorry. Oh I was and I think it's worth noting that um, at least the you know, based on the, the, the comments and, and the 
research presented to us by one of the commenters is that uh, plantings, if there was a noise problem associated with the ball, that the plantings were not sufficient anyway to deal right, with the issue, right. so might not be a, you know, I think the prior use of it as a basketball court in a playground is also something to consider. So then our two conditions would be the lighting, no no lighting, no lighting after a certain time, or no permanent, no permanent lighting. lighting. Permanent they lighting. said no they lighting were not installed. planning on yeah, no permanent lighting. And was there any, was there a second one? No. Any other discussion? I get a motion to close public comment. Um, yeah, a motion to close public comment. Second. Second, George. Any discussion? All in favor? I'm recusing. Okay. Hmm? I'm recusing. Okay. Were you going to say something, Sam? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Not now. laughs> Let's go to the ball. Let's go uh, athletic fields. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Right, athletic course. Athletic course. Recreation areas. George, you want to close this out? Sure, I'd be happy to make a motion to uh, um, approve the site plan amendment by 1924 LLC, formerly Clark School, to remove the steps at Accessory Athletic Court at 4054 Round Hill Road, Northampton, map ID 31 b 4 with the one condition that no permanent lighting be installed around the athletic court. Three seconds. Yeah. Uh, three seconds. Um, <laughs> any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? One extension? You're good. Thank you. Thank you. What was your uh, I'm actually on the, I, um, I read on the space for for one more month, at least until the 7th and 9th, I'll actually office there. Okay, kids, let's keep this going. Next up, uh, <laughs> street acceptance uh, petition on North Street. Um, so, uh, you were also sent this um, bit of a plan. Um, and just to reiterate, the city is um, starting to work on modifications to these two street segments, North Street as well as Finn Street, and discover that there were sections that had never been officially accepted by the city. So the city cannot um, spend any public money on streets that are not public ways. So this is really just a clean up. <laughs> um, and there are two sections. This one happens to be North Street. So you're making a recommendation to city council about whether or not the city should accept these little bits of streets. This is what I live on North Street. Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Not really. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask. I mean, because my business is on North Street. You're not going to do no, it. I mean, oh, not this, this section. Not this little nub, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just that little nub that goes it's from. It's just that section. From the so, like, underpass. Huge. Huge. <laughs> but, you know, the other thing, are you paying to plow any of this section no. <laughs> right now? No. Oh, the city's doing that for you. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, no. Okay. So, I'm just interested, who are these folks who signed off on both the applications? They're all from DPW, I think. <laughs> um, That's the way it works, their staff at DPW or? Yeah, they just go around and sit. Yep, they're all DPW employees. Yeah, it's on the top. Yeah. <laughs> but it can be any, so the requirement is six residents of the city of Northampton can uh, petition for street acceptance. Great, I think this is. Fantastic. I'm going to every day. I want, it, I want it to be included. Yeah. This what actually happened, this happened to my mom on her street. She got really hurt for a whole winter because it was like during this whole confusion about right. what they couldn't could right. buy. Right. That's disaster. Yeah. Well, we really need Finn Street to <laughs> For real. Yep. So, uh, who wants That's to take this one? So, so, we're making a recommendation to City Council. Yep. Uh, I move that we uh, accept Finn Street. No, North Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Order. I would, I would really uh, accept this portion of North Street as a um, city street. 
So we'll move that recommendation to City Council. Can I get a second? Yeah, second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All right, now Finn Street. Same story, different street. Yeah. <laughs> same signatures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is the same signatures. I move to accept. Uh, <coughs> I recommend the City Council that uh, uh, the Finn Street petition uh, sound that out. We forward it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, two for two. Now we got an AR. So are there lots of other streets all around the city that yeah. have to build another Yeah, but yeah, last few we years. We have no idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Interesting. No yeah. idea. Um, oh my goodness, where did I put this plan? No. I'm curious. Okay. So, you think A&Rs don't make sense because they're approval not required even though you're requiring, even though you have a sign on This is even less of an approval not required. <laughs> so that's just I make a motion. <laughs> this was an A&R that you all approved. <coughs> create three lots and now they want to extinguish the line in between two of the lots to merge them to one lot. My argument is they don't need it, they just need to change the deed. But the surveyor came with an A&R, not A&R to merge a lot, not creating any new lots, but right. actually eliminating a lot. Um, Where is this? This is on Old Wilson, Wilson Road. Road. That's the right Old Wilson Road, going down from 66, cutting over <coughs> Lawrence Road, so it goes by the golf course that um, is on the market. Yep. Um, so there are lots of wetlands here, and so they can't build on this port on this lot anyway because it's basically all wetlands. So they just want to merge these two. We consistently tell people just go to, into your deed and muck around and call it a day oh, yeah. and it's one lot <laughs> or, or come and then come to our come to the city and say hey I want these merged so then we make the line disappear for assessors purposes for you know stormwater fees and all that stuff but the surveyor is saying that lawyers don't like that they want an A&R they want the planning board to sign off that this is not a new lot being created it's a lot being taken away. Right. So that's what this is. I move to accept the ANR on Wilson. Old Wilson. Old Wilson. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Girl, no, you. No, you. Uh, Any discussion? Wow. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Move that we close the meeting. Second. Do students have any questions for us? <laughs> yeah. Every planning board meeting just like this. Oh, <laughs> about 45 minutes, we're out the door. So you enjoy it? It's boring, is it? <laughs> Not much action here. Come in a couple weeks. Come in a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Spring coffee because we might be here a little later. I'm done with the coffee. Is there a professor? Is there a time? Yeah, exactly. I'm home early. I don't know about the meeting until we have a big one. So formally opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.